Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to continue working on the gizmo that we started working on Friday. Um, I will have a video. Uh, please watch this video all the way through to help you uh, do what you need to do today. Today, we're going to be primarily working on pages three and four. Um, we will be working on this one more day this week, but if you feel like you understand what you need to do and you want to just keep going, uh, go ahead and go for it. Then you won't have to deal with it later in the week. Um, there will not be any Google Meets for Science today. Uh, we have a meeting during third hour, so um, we will, I will not have any Google Meets open. Uh, please send me a Schoology message if you have any questions. So we're looking at part B on this gizmo that we started last week. So as always, it's got this get you started section at the top of the page. So we're going to click reset and we need to select the respiration tab. So reset is going to be over here on the gizmo. Uh, we're just getting started, so we don't really have anything to reset. And then the respiration tab is up on the top here. So we're going to switch over. It tells us that cellular respiration occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell and in the mitochondria. The organelle which is found, or those are organelles found in all complex cells. Bacteria and other simple organisms do not contain mitochondria. The gizmo shows a mitochondrion surrounded by yellow cytoplasm. So this big orange thing, that's a mitochondria. And then out here in the yellow or orange, that is the cytoplasm in a cell. So it's asking us to start uh, with a prediction. Or we're going to be looking at what the inputs and outputs are of cellular respiration. It says, of the molecules on the molecules pane, which do you think are inputs or ingredients in cellular respiration? Which do you think are outputs? So they're talking about over here, under where it says molecules, oxygen, glucose, carbon dioxide, and water. Um, so you will just need to list which two do you think are inputs and which two do you think are outputs. You might be starting to remember this, or if you just want to look in your notes, uh, we have uh, sort of gone over this already. Um, so it may not be much of a prediction for you, but you please write uh, which two you think go with inputs and which two you think go with outputs. Next on number two, it says drag each molecule from the molecules pane to the respiration pane. Which molecules are inputs in cellular respiration? So you're going to drag the four items over here into the respiration section. The two that stick are your inputs. So it looks like our inputs are glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen. So you'll write those two items on number two. Number three says, click next. What happens in the cytoplasm? Next is this gray button here. Tap on that. And what happens? Well, it looks like our glucose split into two separate items, new things called pyruvate. And this little E showed up here. That's going to be representing that there's a small amount of energy produced. Now, one thing that is nice that we have available to us is you can look in the description part down here. It's hard to see because of my recording menu. Um, it tells you what's occurring here. As long as you have the description button checked, it says in the cytoplasm, the glucose molecules splits into two pyruvate molecules. A small amount of energy is produced. So. It is easy to miss down here, but this description part of the gizmo is really useful. It kind of gives you a written description of what's happening. So you're going to write down what happened. Glucose split in two, and a small amount of energy was released. This process that just happened is called glycolysis. Two pyruvate molecules are produced in glycolysis. The released energy is used to form a net of two ATP molecules. Remember, ATP uh, stands for adenosine triphosphate. Energy is released, is later released when AT molecules are broken down. So now we're on to number four. It says, click next. What happens now? Click next. The 
two pyruvate molecules move into the mitochondrion. So you're going to write that on here for number four. Number five says click next again. What happens in the mitochondria? So we're watching what's going to happen in the mitochondria here. So looking at the description, it tells us in a series of steps, pyruvate is broken down and energy is produced. Carbon dioxide and water are released. So summarize that for number five. Pyruvate is broken down. Energy is produced. Carbon dioxide and water are released. Reading on, energy from the mitochondrion is also stored in the form of ATP. A net of 30 ATP molecules are produced for every two molecules of pyruvate. That's why they have a whole bunch of little E's here, instead of just one from glycolysis. Cellular respiration involves two phases. The anaerobic phase does not involve oxygen, while the aerobic phase does. Where does each phase take place? So if you think back to the two parts of glycolysis, of respiration that we just saw, um, which part required oxygen? Just by looking at the picture here, right here you see O2, that's your oxygen. And so this, what happened in the mitochondrion, is the aerobic part of respiration. And where is that occurring? In the mitochondrion. So the second one is going to be mitochondrion because that does involve oxygen. The first part where the glucose was just split into two pyruvates out here in the cytoplasm, that did not involve any oxygen. And so that's going to be the anaerobic part of respiration. So for anaerobic, you're going to write cytoplasm because that's where that occurred. Continuing on to number seven, we're looking at the formula. Based on what you have seen, write a simplified formula for cellular respiration. So we saw glucose you can reset this and watch it again we saw at the beginning glucose plus oxygen were there were the inputs so you'd write those on the first two lines and after the reaction occurred energy was produced but a lot of times that's left out of the formula and carbon dioxide and water are our outputs down here. So you're gonna write those after the arrow, CO2 plus H2O. Turn on the input output formula to check that we are correct. So that's this checkbox here. And were you correct? Hopefully, uh, we're reviewing this a little bit. We've been talking about it for about a week. On to uh, this challenge question. The numbering is off on the Gizmo worksheet. To find, to balance the inputs and outputs of cellular respiration, there should be the same number of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen atoms on each side of the arrow. Is the formula balanced as written? Why or why not? So if you look at this, on this side of the inputs where I've got my mouse hovering, we've got six. C's. The C represents carbon. On the other side, we only have one carbon. Is that balanced? No. So we really don't even have to go any further than that. But if you wanted to, you have 12 hydrogens over here in glucose. And over on the output side, we only have two hydrogens in water. For oxygens, we have six plus two. So we have eight oxygens on the input side. And we have two oxygens in carbon dioxide and one in water, so we only have three. So it is not a balanced equation or formula. And you would say, for why or why not? You would say, because there are not the same number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms on each side of the arrow. Uh, it says, now balance the input and output formula by adding coefficients to each molecule. Write the balance formula below, and then check it by clicking balance. Um, I think just go ahead and click balance and write down the new formula. The coefficients 
are these numbers that are written before oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water, the number six. Those are called coefficients. Um, as they have written this, uh, as they've balanced it, they add those up into the gizmo. And this is just telling you that one glucose molecule plus six oxygen molecules makes six carbon dioxides and six water and all the energy that is produced. So you're going to copy that formula down here. This is also the formula that our textbook uses. So it's going to look familiar with those extra sixes in there. Number eight says compare the aerobic phase of cellular respiration in the mitochondrion produces a net of about 28 to 30 ATP molecules. How does this compare to the energy released in glycolysis? So if you're looking up here, um, it's telling you that in the second part of respiration, we produced 28 to 30 ATP molecules. And they're showing you that with uh, five letter E's here. In the first part of respiration, glycolysis, we only had one E produced here. So if we are uh, simply going off of uh, the value of each E, each E would be worth about 6 ATP. And I know that just because I'm taking 30 ATP that are produced divided by 5 E's. Okay, 30 divided by 5 is going to give me 6. And so if we're simply looking at that, it's going to tell you that <clears throat> there's about five times as much energy produced in the aerobic phase compared to the anaerobic phase. Or to use other words, the second part of respiration produces five times as much energy as the first stage called glycolysis. It gives you a note here that says some textbooks state that up to 36 ATP ATP molecules are produced in this phase of cellular respiration. In reality, some energy is lost in the process due to the cost of transporting molecules and imperfect membranes. So it's just telling you that some books tell you there's actually 36 ATP made. They're calculating that some of that is lost, and that's why they're telling us that there's only 28 to 30 ATP molecules. Uh, last question on this second page says, extend your thinking. When you think of the word respiration, you might think about the process of breathing, which is actually called ventilation. The respiratory system consists of the windpipe, lungs, and etc. So when we're breathing. How is breathing related to cellular respiration? And think about both inputs and outputs of cellular respiration. So if we look at our formula down here, our inputs are glucose and oxygen. So when you breathe, what are your inputs? You breathe in, you're taking in oxygen. So you've got similar inputs. And as far as the glucose goes, you use energy when you are breathing. And so this glucose is going to be where you get that energy from. So our inputs are the same. When you breathe out, if we think about the outputs of breathing compared to cellular respiration when you breathe out you're breathing out carbon dioxide which is also an output or product of cellular respiration also when you breathe out you are breathing out water vapor in your breath that's why when you breathe on a window or on a mirror it fogs up or if you breathe on your hand it feels damp after you've breathed on your hand so the inputs and outputs are quite similar, almost identical to uh, the inputs and outputs in cellular respiration. Okay, so uh, please try and uh, form a sentence or two that answers that. Um, How is it related? It has very similar inputs and outputs, and you use those examples. Oxygen is an input in breathing, just like it is in cellular respiration, and it uses energy from glucose, also an input. Outputs are also the same, carbon dioxide and water. Hopefully this is helpful. We have now finished activity B for the gizmo. Um, I will get another video to you tomorrow. 
or later today for activity C. And we'll finish up this gizmo. Have a great day.